We just got to our hotel room. Yay. And this is what it looks like. We've already been walking around for a few hours until our room got ready. Dre already got a tattoo. But now she can't go in the water for six hours, which I don't know why she did that. <laughs> and outside of our room, as you can see, is the pool area, which is a very good view. If you look over to the right, there is the beautiful ocean. Which we're going to be heading down there in just a few minutes. This is our hotel. We just came out out of there. And right outside is the ocean. Thank you. 
this guy is a real guy. Is he really that tall? Watch his camera. Look, he moves. See? Watch, shake your hand. That's kind of scary. Don't push the picture <laughs> well, maybe not on your face. Hey, babe, I'll I'll you. Oh, my God.
pictures you want. Okay.
This is the lobby of our hotel. And here's a restaurant on the ocean. We're on our way to Germain's Blue Round. That's not as fun as it looks. Worst part is like the guys that have the tires on the villa. Makes a lot of money. Those guys are almost in, they're practicing for a race. They got a tire, they so the front, they gotta get the front out of the water for the tire anyway. Yes, how long 15 Hawaii minutes is? Anybody got any ideas? One hour. One hour? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? I have no idea, do you? There's like three of you shaking your heads, which means you actually know. It's however long we choose. We're, we're going 27 miles. The 27 miles to Luau has taken me anywhere from, I've done it in 40 minutes before. I have done this in two and a half hours before. I've probably done it at every time between those. We're not the first bus to leave Waikiki and nothing can begin at the Luau until I've got everyone there. So we're gonna get out there as soon as we can. And I say we have a good time doing it. What do you think? Yeah. Some of you hate Hawaiian time, I can tell that. Uh, I can give you a real time if you really want one. Let me see what. Okay, how's this? Everyone's gonna be at the Luau before seven o'clock tomorrow night. <laughs> so we're going and we should get to know each other I think since you know we are spending this much time together like I just told you I am cousin Gerald it's the hospital Tripler Army Hospital I I'm glad you guys know that one the other night I was asking and this guy goes I know what that is all right cousin what is it? he goes that's the Royal Hawaiian Hotel oh, yeah. <laughs> yep it's on wheels and it follows us sir <laughs> well, that is that's Tripler Army Hospital up there Tripler Army Hospital happens to be the largest military hospital in the United States um, most time I get, you know, nobody could care, they could care less about that. I always get this question, why is it pink? That's a legitimate question, I don't know why. I've heard a lot of stories though. I've heard things like, um, when the commanding... No, the traffic is pretty bad here. In the back, I didn't say phone numbers. <laughs> Alright, so left side, you met them? Yes. Very good, you guys are very, very helpful. Right side, can you do better than them? <laughs> don't, let's just... <laughs> I know you. nothing personal to you. Right over here, um, as we're coming down um, Red Hill over here, you may have noticed it, and that's the top of it right there, Aloha Stadium. Aloha Stadium used to be the home of the uh, Hula Bowl. That's now played on Maui. Uh, it used to be the home of the Jeep Eagle Oahu Bowl and the Aloha Bowl. Um, those are gone. It's the home of the Pro Bowl. It's also the home of the Conagra Foods um, Holiday Bowl. It's the home of the University of Hawaii Warrior football team. Now, Aloha Stadium is one of only a few stadiums in the whole um, United States, possibly even the world, that has the distinction of being able to open or close, depending on the event going on in the field. But you see, since it never rains <clears throat> here in the islands, uh, we never built a roof over our stadium. Uh, as we were coming down, if you took a look at it, the stadiums, the bleachers are separated into three, I believe three, four different sections. What they did is when they built Aloha Stadium, they built those bleachers on airbags. It takes them about approximately 48 hours. They can raise the bleachers up three to four inches and actually move the whole thing in or out, depending on the event going on in the field. Home uh, people in Hawaii. If you got a follow and you, it's hard to train it, so he's following you now. Yeah, we know it wasn't your idea, right? Well, the magic thing, huh? Was it your idea? There you go. Somebody had a question? Oh, there we go. Okay.
your hands together for our tour center, Lei Manna. Torches are lit one by one. We invite you to celebrate the traditions of old and new Hawaii. Soon the sun will send on us. It's going to be a beautiful night in our, our Hawaiian paradise. Family, how about a round of applause for our talk show, Blora Mika? And our torch light the way to our festivities. And now the Kahiapu, the call of the conch show, announces the arrival of Jermaine's Mo'i Kani and Mo'i Bahina. Our Royal Majesties of Aloha will come forward and officially open our little celebration. Uh. <laughs> Hello, hey, hello, hey. Our royal people are attended by two kahili or feather stems. These feather insignias are used as symbols of authority and as flags for our kings, queens, and chiefs. The ancient times we call in Hawaiian Kaval Kahiko. Our Mo'ikan and his lovely Mo'ibahini are king and queen. Our attired and representative ceremony regalia associated with the process that took place there this morning. When an underground oven, or what we call in Hawaiian emu, spelled I-M-U, was prepared. In ancient Hawaii, the emu was simply a pit in the earth or sand used for cooking. Well, the oven, the emu, is prepared, first of all, by heaping stumps of the ki which is known to you as mesquite logs. Then they place smooth and porous lava rocks and riverbed stones on those logs, and with some killing material at a great big bonfire. When the rocks are red hot, some of those rocks are placed into the opu, or the cavity of the pot that have been prepared for the occasion. The pig is then wrapped in a chicken wire mesh to hold the hot rocks in place as it cooks from within. Once all wrapped up, the entire pot of the pig is taken to the emu, the oven, where the remaining hot rocks and river red stones are lined with some crushed up banana leaves, banana stumps, and tea leaves. The pot of the pig is placed on a bed of vegetation, covered up with a hali'i or blanket of more greenery and foliage. And then the entire emu of the oven is sealed with the burlap sacks that you see there, the canvas and the sand that was uncovered for the emu. And what was created in contemporary times can be best described as a giant pressure cooker-like oven. Because it's actually the steam from the hot rocks is a cooking process. Now family, you see our two John and Hokuin Kekua, they're unfastening their chicken wire mesh. And very shortly you're going to see them shaking our pua from side to side. They're going to shake our pua from side to side, there they go, to loosen the hot stones from our pua, enabling the stones to come to the surface so our gentlemen can remove them very bravely with their bare hands. And they're going to demonstrate for you an ancient technique on who's going to toss the first <laughs> <laughs> and then, great cool. Now there they go, family, tossing those stones right out of the oven. Now you could use our emu a couple more hours had you left it intact. But our pig, our pua, is seasoned with the essence of nature. We simply use the pa'akai, the Hawaiian sea salt that we gather from our shorelines. Video's rolling, your camera's set. E kahi one, e lua two, e kolu three, huki kalua pua. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, our Hawaiian steam pig right from its underground oven. Dripping with succulent flavors that await you. The pig looks wonderful in Hawaiian, we say, ono, or delicious. <laughs>
to take a good look. We've transformed these gentlemen into hoop dancers. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you we were going to have some fun tonight. These men have volunteered. for our all-male hula competition this evening. <laughs> and guess what, family? All of you in the dining area will be our judges. You have to remember, family, these, these gentlemen have no, no hula experience whatsoever. All they know is what they've learned backstage by our lovely hula maidens. <laughs> now, it's their job this evening to impress all of you, the judges. Now, John, before we begin, don't start yet. We got some good news. <laughs> We're getting a head start here. There's a few rules I'd like to explain to you. But first, I'll see some trees, a bird, a house going around the island.
going to teach you the basic steps of the hula, but before we begin, right there in the front of the stage, on the sand, we have alakai. These are our assistants, our instructors. So keep your eyes on them, they're going to help you out with the hula. Aloha, Mrs. International. Nice of you to grace us with your presence on stage. Welcome. Now, the first step you're going to... Ladies in the second row, if you can't see the alakai in the front, turn around. We have alakai for you right back there. There we go. Now the first step we're going to learn tonight is...